Racing track champion from Dunlap, the 22 of Shannon Mulberg, and his outside from Wall Lake, the 44 of Jake Payson. Inside row number two, in the third spot, we see the 33R of a double dipper tonight, Jordan Runge, and to his outside, the 28R of Trent Reed. Skyler Savage in the 98 is going to be inside of row number three out of Sioux City into his outside. From Council Bluffs, the 7R of Nick Riesland. Shotgun on the field is going to be the 65 of Racing Riley Payson as the green flag flies in your first heat of your IFCA Sport Compacts. Yeah, Racing Riley Payson is about to have a big life change as uh, he's about ready to move to Des Moines. Uh, him and his longtime girlfriend are going to get a house down there, and he's going to move Payson Pipe Cleaning down to the Des Moines area. So best of luck to him. Hopefully he still comes up here and runs when he can. But uh, look at this. Baby brother, Jake Payson, with the early lead, and he is holding off your defending track champion, Shannon Mulberg. Holding him off, indeed, as he leads us into turn number one after the first lap. Mulberg going to try and mount a charge on the high side, but don't look now. Here comes Riley charging up through the field, says, little brother, you're not going to show me up that quickly. Well, he's still got a long row to hoe, and he has some heavy hitters in Shannon Mulberg and Trent Reed to get by if he wants to uh, try and battle his brother. But another lap down for the 44 of Jake Payson. He's already built up a six-tenths of a second lead over Shannon Mulberg. But Mulberg still whipping that actor Integra for all it's worth. Down into turn three they go. And Jake Payson leading through turns three and four. Mulberg trying to size him up and try to get that run down. Halfway cross flags, halfway through this heat race. As once again, it is, the field is pretty much leveled out. It is Payson, Mulberg, Reed, Riley Payson, and Jordan Runke, your top five. Everybody with a little bit of spacing in between them. No real battles on the track as of right now. Brian Broderson is going to hold the green laundry in the air. Two laps to go for Jake Payson. Field settled in here in this first heat race in your IMCA Sport Compacts here at the Crawford County Speedway. Jake Payson, still your race leader, followed by Shannon Malberg, Trent Reed, Riley Payson, and Jordan Runge. As they come off of turn number four, we got the white flag in the air. One lap to go. Three eighths of a mile for Jake Payson. He'll have his first Crawford County Speedway heat race win in the bag. Trent Reed going to the whip, trying to catch up to the 22 of Malberg. Them two have had some awesome battles in the past. Reed gets about a car length and a half close, and that is it. Can't get any closer. But the kid's going to do it. Jake Payson's going to win heat race number one. Shannon Malberg second. Trent Reed third. Riley Payson fourth. Jordan Runge rounds out your top five. From Arian and to Tanner's outside from Correctionville, that is the area code 712, Levi Volker. From Dunlap to the inside, row number three, that's going to be the 14 of Justin Reitz. And to his outside, also from Dunlap, the 24M Kane, the Bandit Mulberg. And rounding out the field from Dow City, that's the 30E of Evan Ewalt. Green flag is out. We are racing in your second heat race for the IMCA Sport Compacts. The 55G of Cody Gordon taking us into turn number one as look on the outside. Here comes Tony Kerger. I'll tell you, uh, the, uh, the last heat race was a little subdued. These guys are getting a little wild and wooly as Kerger is going to take the lead going into three from Gordon. Levi Volkert, his season so far has been a tale of uh, highs and lows as well, but he's sitting in third. Meanwhile, you have... Justin Reitz and the 24 Emma came to Band of Mulberg rounding out the top five. And uh, I don't know, a couple of Mulberg Motorsports cars battling for four and five. Usually they're battling for uh, somewhere in the top three. Well, don't look now. He is going to make it the top three as Justin Reitz slides it into turn number three. Gets a little side happy to the uh, 712 of Levi Volker, but he's going to take over the position going into turn number one. As Jay Van would say, just a little right side romance, left side love it, nothing major. Justin Reitz now up to that third place spot. Kane Mulberg now coming up to knock on the back door of Volkert in the 712. Meanwhile, Tony Kerger gone, gone. He's already to Dunlap on his way back to Woodbine. As a big old dent in the right side door and everything, he is absolutely on a tear. While Tony Kerger is on a tear, we got a battle for the second place spot shaping up as a battle for fifth. 
fourth and fifth is going on between Kane Malberg and Volker, but looking to the inside, here comes a 14 of, that is, I need to get the Justin Reitz there. And a tuck tail back into the third spot. Green is high in the air. We got two laps to go. And look at Kane Malberg. Of all the passes tonight have been on the inside. Kane Malberg, high, wide, and round the outside, or as high as you can with, oh, wait a minute, 26 a beam. A lot of smoke coming out of there. But as I was saying, we've only got about a groove and a half. And uh, I'll tell you what, right now the 24 amp of Malberg using all, everything he can on that high side. Trouble for Justin Reese as he got into the back of Cody Gordon. He's got a flat right front. He's going to have to limp it to the finish. Well, they've only got three-eighths of a mile left to go, so we will see. As, yeah, he's going up high in the uh, rumbly crumbly. He's letting everybody by. But up front, it's going to be all Tony Kerger as we wait. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Cody Gordon second, Kane Mulder third, Levi Volker in fourth, and it's going to be Tanner Beam running out the top five. And for short attention spans like me, four and a half seconds, Tony Kerger, your heat race winner in heat number two of your IMCA Sport Compacts. Yeah, that was a lot of Mississippis, I was saying. I know that for a fact. You get all your podcast retailers. What would Wahoo say? RPMs are going to come up. Six cars, eight laps of distance. Stock cars are green. It is going to be double OK and Trey Klein. Firing them off down into one and two. Wahoo into second. Clucky third. Nichols going to go from uh, his last row starting spot up to fourth. Here comes Partridge to the inside of Steyer. Nichols now looking to the inside of the 0-2 of Clucky. Can't quite get it done. That is the best battle on the track as of right now. As it's going to be the double OK of Klein leading. Klein leads us down the back straightaway as they thunder down there. Battle for the third spot. Shaping up as giving a little tap to the back. Nichols to the back of Clucky coming into turns three and four. And if Nichols ain't careful, that number seven of Partridge might make his way to battle for that position as well. Tyson Partridge in that sidewinder chassis, brand new piece for him. Looks like some of the bugs might be worked out of it from some of the early season uh, specials that he's done. But I'll tell you what, the double OK of Trey Klein, ever since he got in that stock car last year, has looked simply amazing. And tonight is no different. Picking up where he left off, he has a substantial well, it says one and a half seconds, but I think it's got to be longer than that, don't you, Dugan? It's starting to build that way, but hey, the stock cars are a little bit faster, so larger distances can be covered up in a quick amount of time. Speaking about a quick amount of time, that battle for third is shaping up in a real hurry as Nichols looking to the inside of Clucky. Again, Nichols looking to the inside of Clucky as he has each lap since those two got hooked up. Partridge just... In the catbird seat, salivating at the possibility of one screw up from them two, and he can capitalize, get up into that third place spot. But right now, they're catching Wahoo. Lucky on the back bumper of Wahoo. Albertson goes into turns one and two, trying to hold off. Clucky is now it's an 0 2 and 3 battle for the number two spot, followed by Nichols down the back straightaway, coming into turns three. It's a four car pack for the second spot. You are right. What turned out from a, a two-car battle for third and fourth has now turned into a four-car battle for two, three, four, and five with two laps to go. Trey Klein, he is three-wheeling it through one and two. He is absolutely in another zip code right now. The battle is second, third, fourth, and fifth. Right now it is. Wahoo. Oh, a bobble. The 0-2 of Clucky problems. That's going to allow everybody else to get by him. And, uh, oh, yeah, definitely off the power. I saw a little bit of smoke coming out of the right front. Maybe some issues there. Maybe thinking better of it for the moment. But through turns three and four, out on a Friday night stroll, it's Trey Klein in the double OK. Second's going to go to Wahoo, Mike Alverson. Third to Mike Nichols as Partridge and the eight of Steyer. So heartbreaker for Adam Clucky. Hopefully uh, it's something they can fix and be back I, out for the feature. I'm seeing some fluids, so maybe he just busted a radiator hose. Multiple lanes of racing for later on tonight. Well, I mean, it is like a 1,000% humidity out here. So, yeah, the moisture's going to tend to stay right there.
Looks like the caution lights are out. We're going to go green this time by. Front row, your defending track champion, Blessington. Jake Sacco, your defending sport mod track champion. This is going to get good. We're green. Blessington's going to fire them off down into one and two. But it's going to be Sacco with the lead as they go into turn number two and out. Sacco followed by Blessington, Von Drack, Stapleton. And the 62 of Barton rounding out the field. And uh, to nobody's surprise, Jake Sacco leads his first competitive lap in the stock car. Sacco leading lap number one and followed hot behind him is Brian Blessington, that 92B. Von Drack holding on to the third spot, but he's got a little gap between him and Stapleton. Battle for the lead shaping up as Blessington's going to knock on the back door there. Sacco coming down another lap. Sacco still your race leader almost into the wall as Blessington as he tries to charge on. Not only is he holding off one of the best veterans in the business in Blessington, he is starting to inch away. I'm telling you, Jake Sacco could win the Walmart 500 in a shopping cart. He's up to a half second advantage with, as they mark another lap down. Another lap in the books as Sacco extending his race lead as Blessington three-wheeling it off of turn number two, trying to get that drive down the back stretch, and he does drive it a little bit. Sacco slides it through turns one and two. Blessington caught up a little bit there as a look at live timing. The gap is just over half a second, .630, as Blessington tried to gather back up. He is catching Sacco as they go down the back stretch. Sacco is up to a three-quarter second lead, now down to just a hair over six tenths as Blessington drives it deep into three. This is gonna get close, ladies and gentlemen, as we got three laps to go. Two tenths of a second is all the advantage. Blessington all over the rear bumper cover of the 14 of Sacco. Down the back stretch they go into turn number three. Blessington's gonna have to think better of the charge as he's just trying to find the best line around. Green's gonna go high in the air. We got two laps to go and two cars battling for the race lead. You've got the Wiley Stock Car veteran. You have the hot shoe, the Sport Mod hot shoe, making his first competitive laps in a stock car. And right now the veteran taking a look underneath of Sacco, not quite gonna do it. Sacco's gonna hang on to lead as the white flag comes out. Can he hold off Blessington for one more lap? As Broderson waves the white flag for the field, Blessington gonna look to the inside of turns one and two, tuck tail in, get that drive, he's gonna Drive it up the high side. Maybe gives a little tap there. Let some noise there through turns three and four. And off of four, it's going to be the 14 of Jake Sacco. Jake Sacco picking up his first career heat race win in a stock car over the defending track champion, Flying Brian Blessington in second. The Galva go-getter, Mike Vondrak in third. Mike Stapleton in fourth. And rounding out the field, Rick Barton. Are you kidding me? I knew when Sacco said in Columbus that he and Reitz had a stock car, this was going to Tiger and wanting to start the year off right. Let's see who parks it in Van Wall Equipment Victory Lane at the end of 10 laps. The Culver's Compacts are green. It's going to be Kane the Man of Alberg with that early advantage as he's going to throw. Oh, we've got big problems. Jake Payson up and over seven, eight, nine times. Wow, Riley Payson got sideways, unfortunately caught the left rear of his little brother and Jake went for a ride. Oh, man, ladies and gentlemen.
Red flag is out. Emergency safety crews heading their way now. Officials already at the car talking and making sure that Jake Payson is okay. And we'll pass along word once we know. Wow. That was a big ride going into turn number one. There was a bit of contact going on down the front stretch here. That was between Beam and Riley Payson. And whenever that contact was made, Beam slid down, crossed back. And when that cross back was made, there was more contact. Then Beam slid up the track and clocked Jake right in the left quarter panel and sent him for a ride. Oh, man. Actually, yeah, that was yeah, that was Tanner Beam. I'm sorry. White car, pink numbers, both him and Riley. So, uh, yeah, it looks like he went up to talk to Tanner Beam. My apologies to Riley there. Although, Riley is up along the wall facing the wrong direction, pinched up there. Anna Mulberg uh, taking a look. Cannot see the car to his outside. The next row is looks like it's going to be the seven. Seven R Nick Roseland, and we're going green. As once again, Kane Malberg with a great run. He is going to fire it off in a one and two. Cody Gordon gets around Shannon Malberg now tries to get under Rungi. Can't quite get it done. He's going to get a little shot in the rear bumper for his trouble. Here comes the 65 of Payson. Payson now to the inside of the 22 of Malberg, right on the back bumper of Cody Gordon. Is Gordon on the back bumper of Rungi? Three, two, three, four, and five all up for grabs. As they go into turns one and two, smacking the brakes as Malberg as he gave a tap to the back of Payson going into turn number one. It's a three car dash for the second spot. Rungi in the middle, Gordon up high, and was looking down on the inside was Payson is now. Malberg runs on the high side of pace and battle rages on for second on back. Cody Gordon, that car is in love with this track right now and he is FAST fast as he is trying to track down Kane Malberg. Little does he know he's the meat in a Malberg sandwich because right behind him is Shannon Malberg. And caution is out. Old Jacques Debris making another, uh, another call back here as, oh, we've got a lot of it, and I have a sneaky suspicion I know where that came from. Yeah, something's uh, missing on the front of uh, uh, Levi Volker there. What sort of procedures do we normally use? I'm sorry, I'm a little uh, <laughs> confuzzled by what I see uh, over here. Good question. Normally it would be the Delaware double file restart rules, but uh, looks like they're doing a traditional side-by-side. -side. Well, of course, last time we restarted was understandable. We did not have a... Uh, lap under the belt. It was a complete restart, but uh, yeah, it looks like they're going double file. Interesting. We will be coming to the green this time off of turn number four as it's Kane the Bandit Mulberg leading us through turns three and four. Cody Gordon to his outside. Green flag is back out. We're back underway here in your Mach 1 IMCA Sport Compact. Brought to you by Culver's and Carroll. And once again, it's going to be uh, Kane the Bandit Mulberg with the lead. Shannon Mulberg going around the outside, around the outside. He's going to get Gordon. Gordon drives way up under the rear bumper of Kane Mulberg as Shannon Mulberg goes around the outside. Your defending track champ is now your leader. Shannon Mulberg followed by Kane Mulberg, Cody Gordon, Rally Pace, and Jordan Rungi. Kane Mulberg doing anything he can to keep Cody Gordon behind him, but that's going to open the Whoa. Whoa! Major tap to the back goes. Gordon to the back bumper of Malberg. Malberg, that was a that was a hefty shot in the shorts there as uh, Shannon Malberg walking away right now with the race lead. Looks like maybe a little contact between Kane Malberg and Riley Payson broke the momentum on Kane's car. And uh, as he checked up, Cody Gordon nowhere to go, but Riley Payson now up to second. Here is the question. He has, as of right now, a 1.5 second deficit. Can he make anything up as they go by this time? No, 1.8 seconds as we're halfway home. Meanwhile, that was going on. Cody Gordon got a major run to the high side and just whipped around the outside of Kane Malberg as Malberg has now fallen to the wayside. Problems for the 24M of Kane the Bandit Malberg as he has fallen back deep in the field. First, your leader still Shannon Malberg being chased down by Riley Payson. Now third is Cody Gordon, followed by Runge and Kerger. 
So the champ back up where he was a lot last year. That is in the lead. Riley Payson hanging on, although he did shave four tenths of a second off last lap. Let's see what he gets this time by. Back up to a 1.87 or eight second difference between Shannon and Riley Payson. Cody Gordon, he's going to the whip trying to grab Riley, but right now, your top four are absolutely strung out. While Shannon Mulberg runs with the race lead, Green's gonna go high in the air, two laps to go. Looks like Kane Mulberg found it on the gear. He's trying to battle back with Turner in the ninth car. He was looking to the high side last lap. Into turn one they go, he's looking high. Gonna cross it down, maybe dive to the inside. We might have a battle for the mid pack. Shannon Mulberg now with a 1.9 second lead as the white flag comes out. One lap to go. Can the champ pick up where he left off last year? He wants to start that title defense in Van Wall Victory Lane. He's at turn number two. Gonna fire it off down the back stretch into turn number three. Kelsey and the kids are gonna be happy because Daddy's bringing home another trophy. Shannon Mulberg wins. Riley Payson in second. Third, Cody Gordon. Fourth, Jordan Runge. And Tony Kerger rounds out the top five. Once he got to the race lead, he set it on cruise control. No problems at all for the 22 of Shannon Mulberg taking home your IMCA Sport Compact feature win here tonight. Row two to the inside, it's Brian, Brian, Brian Blessington to his outside, the double OK of Trey Klein. Fans this time by, give them a wave. They're going to put on a show for you. Green goes high in the air. We're going green next time by. Row number three to the inside from Manning. That's the 14 of Jake Sacco. And from Galva to his outside, the Galva go-getter, the 66 of Mike Vondrak. Row four to the inside, sees the 10 of Mike Stapleton. And to the outside, the 7 of Tyson Partridge. Row number five, we'll see Rick Barton to the inside of the 62 and Nick Steyer to the outside. Shotgun on the field is going to be the 0-2 of Adam Clocky. The 11 cars, 15 laps the distance. The class too tough to tame. The battle is on off of turn number four. Nichols with a great start, drives it into turn number one with an early race lead is now Albertson's got a challenge for the second spot from Fly and Fly and Blessing Blessington. Into turn three they go. The top four are single file. We got a three pack for the mid pack. As Nichols is going to lead, the best battle is going to be Jake Sacco and Mike Bondrak. That is four, six, and seven right now. Tyson Partridge also joining into that battle. Right behind them, there is a battle with Stapleton Steyer. And Clucky was in there for just a second. Now it looks like Flying Brian Blessing is going to try to get under Wahoo. Can't quite get it done. Mike Nichols checks off another lap. Nichols, Albertson, Blessington, Klein in a three-car battle with Sacco to the inside of Partridge, knocking on the back door of Vondrak. Down the back straightaway they go. Battle for second region on as here comes Blessington to the inside, knocking on the back door of Wahoo. And he says, Wahoo, no you don't. Down the front stretch, knocking on the back door. Battle for second still on. Oh man, when they came out of four, there's a nice purple stripe going from the left side to the right side on Wahoo's back tail panel as Blessington literally slid right across his backside. Nichols still leading, but I'll tell you, Wahoo looks like he might be catching him just a little bit. As it looks like the 0-2 of Adam Plucky is gonna call no joy, his night will be done. Clocky's night is done, but what night is not done is this battle for the second spot, which is catching your race leader. Nichols is not driving away from this one. Blessington's putting the pressure on Albertson, who's trying to take that pressure and put it towards Nichols. In a turn one, they go. Blessington looks to the low side, tries to drive it up. He's at the tire. Looking the inside, down the back straight away. We're side by side for a second. Dives it down to the inside of turn number three. Through the middle of three and four and off of four, Albertson gonna hold on to the second spot. Nichols now starting to pull away, went from six tenths to a second to seven tenths, now to nine tenths of a second. But again, it is Blessington coming off of two, did not quite get as good a run this time around, as he is now gonna go right back to the back bumper of Wahoo, trying to get underneath of him, can't go. Oh, Nichols pulls up, 
problems for Nichols. Mike Nichols. Not flat the right win. rear. Flat right rear for the 63 of Nichols. Now the battle for the race lead is on. Albertson. Yellow is out. Yellow is out. Oh, looks like possibly. Uh, I'll bet there's some chunks of who's your rubber floating around the track somewhere. But, uh, oh, man, that just totally changed the entire ball game. Seeing, I'm just calling what I see. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I see them going down the back straightaway, getting ready to pick up the pace. Wahoo, Mike Albertson on the pole. Blessington the inside and Klein. Green flag goes, and we're racing once again in your stock car. Oh, and Blessington was up to the door panel on the three of Albertson. Couldn't make it go again. Blessington able to drive it in a lot deeper into one and three, but it is Wahoo able to pull it off a two and four with a better run as he is just a slight bit higher than Blessington. Now Blessington going to change his line, follow Wahoo right in the tire track, see if that works. Here comes the seven of Partridge. Partridge knocking on the door of third. Meanwhile, back in the pack, we got Jake Sacco trying to hold off Stapleton and Steyer. Three-car battle for the near the back of the pack, but Sacco takes over the position. He's going to try and drive it out. Speaking of driving out, we got a battle for first, a battle for third, and a battle. Basically, we got battles all over the field here, PJ. And this is why this is one of my favorite types of racing anywhere, the stock cars, because they have pure action all the way through. Right now, Blessington once again, right on the back bumper. Make it the corner panel. Make it the door of Wahoo. Can't quite get it done. Wahoo able to lead another lap. I want you to watch as Blessington sizes up Albertson through turns one and two. He's going to look down to the low side. If he has a tuck tail, he's going to slide up high and try to find his way around. He's been doing it lap after lap, looking low, looking high, looking anywhere he can to find his way past that three of Albertson. The problem with that is, though, Albertson is holding the same line every lap. It is right where that car likes to eat, and that car is working right where it is. The only two options Blessington has is driving it deep and try to pull the slider or go up in the rumbly crumblies over the cush, which we both know is not going to work, although he looks high there for a second. He dives it down low. Battle for the race lead is on as, by the way, Partrick pulls off his night is done. But down the back straightaway, it's a side-by-side -side battle into turn three. Wahoo up on the high side. Blessington looking down low. As they come off of turn number four, Wahoo takes the position again. Still a battle for the race lead. We've got five laps to go. And again, Wahoo, just that car is working better on his preferred line. That was last time through one and two. He decided to switch to the low side to try and take the line away from Blessington. It worked, but now he's back up to the mid group. Blessington again to the corner panel, but cannot go any further. Meanwhile, Sacco and Stapleton are battling out deeper in the field, and Stapleton's going to dive to the inside of Sacco. Sacco in that 14, three wheels, and gets back ahead of Stapleton. Down the back straight away, go battle for the race lead once again, going on into turn number three. Blessington dies it down low, has to think better of it. Off of four, Green goes high in the air. We got two laps to go. Blessington now knows he can get side by side with Wahoo. The problem is they have a lap and three quarters left. Can he figure out the magic key to kick the door in to get by? He's at the corner, at the door, side by side going into three. The white flag in the hands of Chief starter Brian Broderson. They're going to be side by side coming out. Slight advantage to Wahoo, one to go. One lap to go, and he's going to give a little nudge to Albertson going to turn number one. Side by side through turns one and two. Blessing to the low side. Albertson's going to try and get that drive off the corner. He does a little contact, and Blessington loses a bit of ground. He's got one last chance off of four this time. It's Wahoo to the checkers. Mike Albertson wins. Brian Blessington in second. Trey Klein third. Mike Vondrak comes across fourth, and in his first ever stock car race, Jake Sacco will take home a top five in fifth. Albertson, a four tenths of a second advantage. If there wouldn't have been that little contact coming out of two, what might have been? I'm wondering what might have been if, if uh, Nichols was able to get that tire change and having a charge from the back of the pack. That would have been fun to watch.